My headline one is another type selector, and I'm controlling a lot of things on here. A um, couple things I've used before, but there's a few unusual ones. I'm doing a text transform to make sure that my characters all display in lowercase, and I'm controlling letter spacing, eight pixels. So there's eight pixels of space in between each letter, just for effect. All right, now we're getting to some of our more unusual ones. This is an example of a child selector. Now, since we can put elements inside of other elements, you create parent elements and child elements and grandchild elements and great-grandchildren. Well, this is telling my browser that an emphasis that is a child of a span. Now, where did I do that? Right here. This emphasis is a child of the span element that contains it. This emphasis is also a child of the span element that contains it. So, the span element is a parent. The emphasis, these two examples of emphasis, are children of the span. Now, you could also look at it this way. Headline 1 contains the span. For instance, my headline 1 contains the span, my span contains the emphasis. So it could be described as headline 1 is my parent, span is a child, and emphasis are children of span. So in this particular rule, I'm manipulating emphasis as a child of span. Emphasis as a child of span will have this particular color, which is a light shade of yellow. The selector that follows it is an adjacent selector. Whenever I have an emphasis that is right next to another emphasis, it's going to be colored bright yellow. So if I look at my HTML, the emphasis that occurs right next to another emphasis is going to have a different color. The emphasis that occurs next to another emphasis is going to be bright yellow. Now where I had ID wrapper and ID central column, I formatted them here. My outer wrapper is 100% wide. My central column is narrower than that, 700 pixels and I'm centering my central column with zero pixels margin on the top and bottom and automatic margin on the left and right. We'll use this a lot more when we start talking about web page layouts. My central column has a background color which is a dark shade of green and a border color which is an even darker shade of green. That creates this dark green central column with its even darker green border. This is a grouped selector. I know I didn't list that in my, in my list, but it's not really a different one. It's simply another way of formatting multiple selectors together. In this example, my definition terms and my definition definitions will share all of these declarations or properties. Both my terms and my definitions will be 500 pixels wide, 0 pixel top and bottom, auto left and right margins, a medium shade of green, a light yellow background color, and four pixel padding on all four sides. So these are the characteristics that my terms and my definitions had in common. However, I did want some unique characteristics. Type selectors for definition term. My terms are going to be bold and they will have a nine pixel margin top. My terms are bold right here, type class, and the margin top is this little green space right in between each of these yellow boxes. This is a pseudo class. The first letter of my term is going to be red. The first letter of my term is red. Type selector for my definitions. Color is black, font size is 90% of default 
a little smaller. This is a descendant selector. Use this one quite a bit. This controls my examples, but it only controls my examples that are within my definition list. Now, a descendant is not a direct child. It could be a child, it could be a grandchild, it could be a great grandchild. So, a descendant selector is a little bit more encompassing than a child selector. For instance, my dot example is really not a child of my definition list. It's actually a grandchild. So using a child selector here, a greater than sign right in between there, would not work out. Let's go back to my HTML as a reminder. My example is a child of definition. My definition is a child of definition list. So, example is a descendant of my definition list. If I wanted to do the same thing, I could say my example is a child of my definition. If I save this and go to my browser and refresh, there's no change in the look. However, if I said example was a child of definition list, back to my browser and refresh, that style is broken. Example is not a child of DL. Example is, though, a descendant of DL. Save, browser, refresh. There we go. So those are some of the different selectors used in creating style sheets. Let this serve as an example of a bunch of different properties that we haven't tried yet and also the different ways that you can format elements on your web page. On the fancier websites that use CSS heavily, and they do, you'll start to see more of these more unusual ones like child selectors and descendant selectors and group selectors and pseudo classes.